everyone, Gerald here. Welcome back to Studio Ploy. As you can see, I am currently on site. It's an ongoing project. It's actually a one bedroom unit located here in Bonifacio Global City. More updates of this unit will be posted on Studio Ploy's social media soon. Before I talk more about this unit, I just recently finished the two adjacent studio units in Pasig City, which are scheduled for release in the coming weeks. By the way, at the end of this video is the teaser for the part one. In connection to the Pasig Makeover project, I have made two special DIY projects which I think deserves the spotlight. The first one are two large artwork inspired by a minimalist painting from a New York apartment I saw on Pinterest, and of course, the owner of the property. For our second project, we are going to upcycle four fairly decent looking chairs into a modern, expensive looking one that would help elevate the overall style of the space. These are very easy to do projects that you can actually replicate and recreate. So without further ado, let's jump right into our first project. For the tools and materials, we'll be using acrylic paints, paint brushes, and two 2x3 two feet prime stretch canvas with plywood backing. I started doing the sketches that will serve as our guide once we apply the acrylic. It will be highly inspired by the paintings I showed but with a different twist, approach, and meaning to it. This time, aside from considering the overall style of the space, I also took inspiration from the owner's initials which are the letters D and S. I often use a ready mix black and prefer to create my own black paint as it allows me to play different color temperatures. This time, I wanted a much warmer tone of black for this painting. Using an inch thick brush, I carefully apply the paint, creating a curve and forming an almost quarter circle shape on the bottom left of the canvas. While applying the paint, some paint splashes went on the other canvas, so instead of my initial idea to have a plain background for both paintings, I decided to smudge smaller parts to the second canvas to create this sort of imperfections that would make it look more natural. The very same process that I did to the bottom part, I am now creating a smaller version above the first one. Though it's not yet done, I'd like to paint out how this first part symbolizes a letter D. If you actually cut the painting into two on that disconnected white part, and put the upper part below, it'll actually create a letter D. I also wanted the painting to look three-dimensional, so I decided to continue painting the sides and the edges, 
following what's in front to have that sort of continuity and also since we are keeping this frameless. For the second painting, I continued adding some more painting smudges all throughout the canvas with a circular cloth. Then I start painting the main part or the focal point of this painting using the same color mix I used for the first painting. Here, I am continuously creating a curve depicting a more circular shape. I deviated from the U shape design of our painting inspiration and went for a different route. The very same idea for the first painting though is what I wanted to achieve here, wherein if you cut it into two on that gap part and put the lower part above, it would create the second initial of the owner, which is the letter S. I also thought of the number 8 as it is considered to be a lucky number in Asian culture. I also continued with the 3D concept by painting the side part since we are again keeping this frameless. Acrylic usually dries up faster so it only took me more or less 3 hours to finish this including the drying time. I was also able to hang it after 15 to 30 minutes. And the final result in 3, 2, 1. For our second project, we are going to upcycle this wooden foldable chair. 
For the tools and materials, we'll be using Rust-Oleum Paint and Primer Spray for Furniture in Flat and Semi-Gloss Protective Top Coat also from Rust-Oleum in Matte Finish Sandpapers in Varied Greets and this cordless orbital sander. We need first to disassemble the chairs and we'll keep the seat part unchanged. I was actually able to score these very nice looking chairs as a set with a foldable dining table. I wanted initially to retain its original look but the space doesn't look cohesive with it than what was I have expected. So I came up with the solution to upcycle the chairs to make the space look more cohesive and also to elevate the look of this simple but functional foldable chairs. After disassembling the chairs, I kept the seat part to its original look for it to have this contrasting element and the rest of the foldable frame we will be painting in black. Before painting, we need to properly prepare it for it to have a smooth and luxurious looking finish. With the cordless orbital sander, I sanded off the varnish with a 200 grit sandpaper mostly on the flat part of the chair frame. I have also manually sanded the curved parts to fully remove the varnish. It is essential to sand to help prepare the area for painting application. By sanding, you are removing imperfections and creating a nice smooth finish while at the same time adding adhesion by developing small wrap ridges for the paint to stick to. After sanding, I wipe out dust using a damp cloth and let it dry for at least 30 minutes. For the first painting application, I'll be using this Rust-Oleum Paint Plus Primer in flat. About 15 centimeters away from the chair frame, I start applying the paint lightly enough for an initial cover. If you notice, the wood is still visible. We are going to do the same process to the rest of the chairs.
Then I will have to let it dry overnight. For our second to third coating, I will be using now the semi-gloss version of the paint. This time, I am focused on fully covering the chair frames, so no trace of wood will be visible after this application. Again, we'll be doing this to the rest of the chairs and we'll have to let it dry again overnight. Before the final coating, we have to smoothen out the imperfections and rough ridges caused by an even paint using a 280 grit sandpaper. For the final coating, I am using the same semi-gloss paint. I actually prefer satin but I couldn't find an available paint in satin finish though I have a solution to this later. After 2-3 to three hours of drying, we are now ready to apply the protective top coat. Top coat adds protection and durability while enhancing color. I'll be applying over chalk ultra matte paint to make the paint last and keep it timeless. If you notice, the finish before applying the top coat is a little shiny because of the semi-gloss paint. I am just happy that I found a top coat in matte to lessen the glossy effect. I always prefer a velvety finish with just a hint of shine, made be with furniture or accessories. This time, the top coat settles and dry faster, so I just let it dry for about 2-3 to three hours before assembling it again. I also keep it untouched overnight for the paint to fully set. If you notice, even without styling it yet, it looked way better and expensive from the original simple design.
found this cushion with bouclet cover and I thought of adding it to the chair which it perfectly fits and totally elevate the final look. And the final result in 3, 2, 1. guys so much for watching. I'll see you in a few weeks for a two-part passive makeover project.